where do you stand on the on the fat intake per day conversation? Because, you know, a lot of people will be preaching a very low fat content per day. And some people will be like, you don't really need to, to care about it. Some people need to have to put a bigger awareness. You make sure that you consume enough. Where do you stand on uh, on that on that range of consumption per day? Probably in the middle, you know. Let's okay. go over that for a minute, okay? Because the history of the vegan movement is historically giving incorrect information about fat. The, yeah. We're talking about the leading nutritional gurus that are most famous, many of them are advocating a low-fat diet and trying to restrict people's intake of nuts and seeds. And I don't have to mention any names, but, um, but that um, information has been adequately disproven and shown that cutting, that trying to, um, like for example, one person said the fat you eat is the fat you wear, that when you eat oil or when you eat nuts and seeds, it puts fat on the body. And are there studies that document that? And let's look at the, let's look at the studies behind that statement or the studies behind the statement that eating more fat from nuts and seeds and worsens diabetes control or makes people gain weight. Let's look at the studies these, um, these nutritional advocates use are studies on oil because it's only the studies on oil that show that oil creates more body fat. When you take an isocaloric diet, that means a, cal- a diet of the same amount of calories, 2,000 calories, 2,000 calories. I take out 2,000 calories of potato and bread and put in 2,000 cal- Oh, excuse me. I take out 200 calories of potato or bread out of the diet and put in 200 calories of nuts and seeds. Same amount of calories, which causes more weight loss, would you think? And the answer is, in every study, it showed more weight loss when you took out part of the carbohydrates and substituted nuts and seeds because all their calories are not biologically available. They get excreted in the toilet bowl. And would it be because of a decrease in also glycogen because you're going to be consuming less carbohydrates? You're also taking in less um, glucose as well. Yeah. But, there, but, you're, and, but, but additionally, um, and we're not so with oil, you're seeing more weight gain and, more, and worse diabetic control. But because yeah. the nuts and seeds don't, have a, don't put much calories in at one time, there's no oil rush in the blood. So when these people who are telling you about their diabetes program to restrict nuts and seeds to one ounce a day on their diabetes program is too much fat inhibits diabetes, then you say, well, what are the studies to document that? And their studies are studies on oil. Because when we look at the studies with diabetes in nuts and seeds, we found that when people remove some carbohydrate, like some whole wheat bread or potato and rice or quinoa, and you substitute nuts and seeds in place, the two ounces a day to three ounces a day, you see more weight loss and more diabetic control Lower hemoglobin, lower hemoglobin A1Cs and lower glucose levels, you don't see what they're saying is true because you don't get the caloric rush of fat in the blood when you eat nuts and seeds compared to oil. And the studies are just because the studies on walnut oil and sesame oil and, and, um, and almond oil show the negative effect on blood glucose doesn't mean when you take the whole nut, you get the negative effect. So there's an exaggeration and distortion of reality And I'm saying, and I published a study on that that was published in the International Journal of Disease Prevention and Reversal, which gave more than 50 references showing that using more nuts and seeds made to more protection against cardiovascular death than using less nuts and seeds. And because of that, when I wrote the book at the end of heart disease, I wrote in the book that Dr. Esselstyn and Dr. Ornish recommending lower levels of nuts and seeds I, and I gave, the, I gave a lot of data and discussed it with Dr. Ornish at that point. And he changed his dietary recommendations to st- after our discussions and work and, and, and um, communication on that to then include some nuts and seeds in his diet because I convinced him with an overwhelming amount of data from the scientific literature. Um, but in yeah, any case, so- I'm saying the data is solid and I don't think it's controversial. You know, we don't want to overeat calories. We don't want to be snacking on nuts. We don't want to be consuming more calories than the body requires. But given yeah. that you're eating at your basal metabolic rate and you're not overweight and you're undershooting your caloric needs, then there's no, you're not having to remove fat in the diet by restricting nuts and seeds. You can eat one ounce, two ounces, three ounces a day, or if you're an athlete, four or five ounces a day. Now, keeping yeah. in mind, the Seventh-day Adventist Health Study 2 looked at this data carefully and they looked at the amount of nuts and seeds people were eating among the Seventh-day Adventist population, which is an important study, probably the most important study, because the Seventh-day Adventists are not people smoking and drinking and eating a lot of meat. They're just eating a little bit of animal product or they're vegans, you know, so. And what it found was that in the highest quintile of nut and seed consumption had the longest lifespan. 
and the lowest cardiovascular deaths by a huge amount. Compared to the lowest quintile, there was a 40% reduction in cardiovascular death in the, in the higher quintile. That quintile were people eating more than 1.3 ounces or an ounce, more than an ounce and a half a day on the average. So an ounce was not the highest quintile. An ounce was the, you know, less than half an ounce was the lowest quintile. So it demonstrated that when people ate more nuts and seeds from a half an ounce to an ounce to an ounce and a half, they got further lifespan benefits. And the vegans that didn't eat not nuts and seeds did not live as long as the vegans who ate nuts and seeds or the flexitarians and non-vegans that ate nuts and seeds. The flexitarians who ate some animal products who regularly ate nuts and seeds lived longer as a whole than the vegans who restricted nuts and seeds. So we have a yeah. lot of data. So of course, I'm very caloric aware and I'm very aware of people overeating. So I'm not suggesting that a person should sit down with a bag of nuts and overeat calories from nuts. I'm suggesting yeah. know your caloric window. You have to be the perfect artist, scientist of your own body and know what the best caloric load for your body is because you know you've adjusted your body fat. You see what caloric level puts you at the best version of yourself. And if you're overweight and you're not losing weight, you're taking in too much food. Yeah. Now, given, in your favorite, given that you're in your favorite caloric window, basically you're a, a five foot one woman who doesn't exercise or a six foot three man who exercises two hours a day, your caloric needs maybe 1,100 calories a day or could be 2,800 calories a day based on your activity and your size and your muscle mass, right? But given you're in your correct caloric window, there's no advantage to cutting back on nuts and seeds and increasing carbohydrates in place of those nut and seed calories. You're better off eating a few ounces of nuts and seeds. Even people that are I'm taking care of that are 100 pounds overweight, I'm giving them about a half an ounce of nuts and seeds with each meal. That's about an ounce and a half a day. Now, I'm not eating a half an ounce with each meal or an ounce and a half a day. I'm eating about an ounce with each meal or about three ounces a day for myself because I need more calories because I'm more physically fit and do more exercise.